All right, year 12. So today we're going to look at protests, political power, and permanent scarring. And I've told it this lecture because um, these three themes actually come up quite a lot following the Stanpak crisis that we've covered already. Um, today we're going to be specifically looking at what's called the Declaratory Act and the Townshend Duties. And um, throughout the introduction of these Declaratory Act and Townshend Duties, um, there is significant protest on both the sides of the Americans and the British. Um, there is a swing and a question over political power and the Americans um, permanently scar the British uh, through the act of feathering and tiring. Last lesson, um, we looked at the Stanpak crisis specifically and we, we found out that the main cause of that crisis is the idea of no taxation without representation. Um, the British lost control over the colonists during this time, and that was specifically seen in the formation of the Sons and Daughters of Liberty movement. We also see during this time that the colonists finally unite against the, the empire for the first time uh, when they start to assess their British rights and they start questioning the role of the king. Um, so these are two really significant consequences of the Stamp Act crisis. And what we're going to cover today is the eventual repeal of the Stamp Act uh, and the replacement of Prime Minister George Grenville with uh, Lord Rockingham and then subsequently after that, um, Charles Townsend. The learning intention for today is to identify the consequences of the Stamp Act by explaining the, dec the Declaratory Act and Townsend duties. And if you're following in your pet textbook, you can read uh, pages 83 to 88 to get a better idea of what we're going to go through today. All right, so protesting the Stamp Act. America protested by claiming that there should be no taxation without representation. The idea that if there's going to be an internal America-only tax, then they should be able to rep represent themselves in the House of Commons in Britain where the tax is being formulated. So that was their main protest. Ironically, Whilst the protest or whilst the Stamp Act was only taxing the Americans, it was having a significant consequence on the British. The Brits started actually protesting the Stamp Act too, mainly because the Daughters of Liberty and also the Sons of Liberty uh, began to boycott British goods. In the process of boycotting British goods, the Brits actually lost British in um, industrial revenue. They actually required the Americans to continue trading with them to make sure that their, the economy stabilized. Uh, and by the, because of the Stamp Act, the Americans have stopped trading with the British. And because of this, Brit, Britain has stopped gaining revenue. So ironic, the ironic thing about this is that the Stamp Act was introduced to gain more revenue from the Americans. But once again, the Americans have foiled Britain's plans and Britain are losing more money than they would have um, if they just didn't introduce the Stamp Act in the first place. And so this actually prompts King George to do a few things. First of all, he asks Prime Minister George Grenville to resign. Uh, and Grenville, just as a reminder, is the person who introduced several of these acts, Sugar Act, Mutiny Act, uh, and the Stamp Act. And whilst there has been some success with the previous ones, the Stamp Act has really, um, really destroyed a lot of the relationship between Britain and America. And King George sees this, and he re he's remembered of the fact that he's the king of the empire. And so he asks, or he forces Prime Minister George Grenville to resign at this point because Grenville's plans aren't working. Now, in doing so, he actually removes the Stamp Act too. Um, you know, Grenville is the Stamp Act's biggest supporter, and without him being in, in Parliament, there isn't really many other people who stand up for the Stamp Act. As we saw in uh, previous classes, um, there was quite a lot of debate over the Stamp Act and whether or not it was necessary and whether or not it was challenging liberties. We saw that in the discussion between Charles Townsend and Isaac Barr in the um, source analysis we did the other day where these two gentlemen argued um, for either side 
and Isaac Barr really communicated the fact that, you know, through the Stamp Act, we are removing the Americans' liberties. Um, so King George responds to the Stamp, or removes the Stamp Act, and he then um, introduces a new character, Lord Rockingham, who will become the new Prime Minister for us. Now, in the process of this, America is chuffed. They're actually super glad uh, because they've won. They actually won against the, the British. They were able to communicate to the British that they didn't want this to occur, and the British listened. And in the process, they've overthrown um, George Grenville, who, in, who has in the past introduced other taxes uh, and acts and legislations that have really hindered the Americans. So the Americans have finally been heard, and it's fantastic for them. So they're really happy at this point. But with the removal of the Stamp Act, you know, Britain, okay, starts to increase its revenue again because the Americans are trading again, but there is a question over the stability of King's of the King's government. You know, George Grenville um, has introduced those, these legislations and then all of a sudden King George has just gotten rid of him. And that is mainly because of these Americans who are all the other, all the way on the other side of the ocean who have been rioting. You know, the, the British start to question, you know, the where does the authority um, sit in this government? Um, is it the Prime Minister? Is it with the King? Or is it with the people? And so Britain starts to question the stability of this um, government itself. We see this in this um, this piece of propaganda that was it was created by a, a um, English cartoonist, uh, which is which is depicting for us um, all the politicians who uh, were really for the Stamp Act and putting the Stamp Act to rest um, at a funeral. And the cartoonist is really mocking the politicians here and saying, you guys, you know, you, you create one act and then you put it to sleep and you haven't really got any consistency over how you approach things or what you do. And it's, it's a cartoon, it's a piece of propaganda that, that again challenges the ability for British government to remain stable. Um, the message here is it's not it's not stable, and a lot of that is because of the Americans. So, with this, America is celebrating the fact that they are um, they they are victors over the over the Stamp Act. But with the introduction of Lord Rockingham he introduces a declaratory act and this comes in pretty much simultaneously as the stamp act is removed by king george and lord rockingham suggests okay if we're going to remove the stamp act that's fine but if we do this we run the risk of you know almost giving the americans too much power in our relationship and so we have to make sure that they are aware that we are still in control and so he, he introduces the Declaratory Act. Um, in it, he quotes, Great Britain has the right to have full power and authority to make laws and statutes of sufficient force and validity to bind the colonies and people of America, subjects of the Crown of Great Britain, in all cases whatsoever. And so the main message here is that um, Great Britain has full power over the colonies and America because they are subjects to Britain. And um, Britain is able to introduce any legislation they see fit to make sure that they can continue governing the colonies in whatever cases it may be. Okay, so it's it's literally a declaration of Britain's power and authority over the Americans. Now. During this time, America is still celebrating, even though that the Declaratory Act seemingly is removing um, liberties or or the freedom of America, like systematically through a political legislation such as the Declaratory Act. America kind of misses this, except for a few radicals that will come across um, in later lectures. Uh, but for the most part, America misses this because they're still celebrating the victory um, over the Stamp Act, and so they kind of don't pick up on the fact that the, the Declaratory Act has been introduced and they also don't really question it because it's not an actual direct tax on them. For the very first time in a long time, a legislation that's coming out of British Parliament isn't taxing them in any way. It's just um, a plain le legislation. 
but for the British, this is um, an opportunity for it, them to introduce what's called the Townshend Duties or the Revenue Acts. So, <laughs> to ironically, based on the on the question of stability in the British government, ironically, Lord Rockingham is actually removed after the Declaratory Act is um, introduced. He's he's actually voted out of Parliament, and Charles Townsend actually gets elected. And be previous to this, Charles Townsend has been the treasurer. Of, of the parliament and so his his main focus is um, the British debt and mercantilism between the Americans and the British and with the with the um, exiting of Lord Rockingham and the introduction of the declaratory act Townsend actually decides where we have to refocus on the main crisis which is the debt the British debt and British economy and so will introduce what's called the Revenue Acts or the Townshend Duties. He does this very, very subtly because he's seen the response of the Americans when he when the Stamp Act was introduced. And this is really an unofficial replacement of the Stamp Act. It's called the Revenue Act of 1767 and Townshend um, taxes the importation of specific household goods um, from Britain to America, such as tea. And this doesn't necessarily go down very well with the Americans. Once again, the Americans, it doesn't take them very long to realize that this is just another tax. It's almost just like the Stamp Act. Um, yes, it's not taxing the Americans' way of life as such, but it's def it's in but it's taxing their, their ability to trade with Britain and it's taxing their importation of goods. And that is enough for the Americans to get upset about. And so they pretty much just boycott British trade again. Um, and the it's, it's, it's funny because, you know, the British obviously don't learn that, first of all, you know, whatever they are talking about, the Americans aren't on the same page with. You know, the communication, there's a massive communication breakdown. It's funny also because whenever a Britain introduces a tax, Americans just respond by boycotting trade. And trade is the main reason why Britain has America in the first place. And so, you know, we see another question or swing of political power in, the, in this. Yes, the Americans are subjected to um, British policies, but they also are the main trade or they are the traders with Britain. And so if they just decide to stop trading with them, then Britain ultimately loses in the deal. And so out of this, you know, Townshend duties, you know, the trade boycott by the Doors of Liberty is is a bit of an evil, um, is an evil action by them, but it's, it's an appropriate action by them. At the same time, though, the British tax collectors in America are also collecting taxes when ships from America to Britain and back to America actually land, like, um, sail into the harbours. And we'll see this actually happen uh, in our next lecture when we look at John Hancock, his, his ship called Liberty actually being seized by British tax collectors. And so there is an evil on both sides of this, that, and there's a swing in political power, especially when um, the Sons of Liberty start introducing the idea of tarring and feathering. And this is where we get the permanent scarring theme come up in our lecture today. The fact that the British respond to the Townshend duties by permanently scarring the British tax collectors in America. We can see this in this um, in this piece of uh, propaganda. The very act of the Americans tarring, so putting actual molten tar on the skin of, of the British um, tax collector and the tax collector being feathered uh, by them too to make them look like a chicken or a turkey or, or whatever it would be. In the process, they are, they are burning the skin of the British tax collectors and also mocking the, the tax collector themselves. And this is a massive message from America to Britain saying, do not mess with us. We are willing to permanently scar your people, your British subjects, your British tax collectors, and we want to make sure that you realise that we think this is a joke and we're going to dress your tax collectors up as birds. It's pretty funny how 
these Americans that that's how they that's how they think. They think that you know it's important to communicate the message, and in they've done all the writing. Right now, they just want to dress their British subjects or the British tax collectors up as birds to represent just how stupid these taxes are for them. So the Declaratory Act, to summarise, is caused by British political instability and is triggered by Lord Rockingham coming into Parliament. And the consequences of this is that Britain remains in full, full control over the Americans and America is subject subjectification. Um, subjected to a lot stricter British rule by law, okay? And then we see the Townshend duties coming to play and they're caused by, again, the economic debt and this theme of mercantilism, once again, they're triggered by Charles Townsend. And the consequence of this is that Britain enforces the importation duties or taxes on small, small household goods. The Americans, Specifically, the daughters, the daughters of Liberty boycott the importation of British household goods, um, and in the process of doing that, the Townshend duties become nullified. Okay, because as soon as the Americans stop importing goods, there isn't anything to tax. So the Townshend duties themselves actually become redundant. Also, the Americans or the Sons of Liberty start tarring and feathering British tax collectors, and, and I've put. You know, a question mark over whether or not this is a Republican move. Is this the the sons and daughters of liberty uh, and the rest of the the patriot Americans demonstrating their republicanism? We'll see when we get to um, our next lectures. All right, so that is it for today. We are going to look at the colonial response to British Revenue Acts, um, specifically to do with the capturing of the liberty, Samuel Adams' circular letter, and the Boston Massacre. Uh, in the following three lectures. If you've got a question, please put it on the Google Classroom. We'll bring it into class and we'll discuss it then.